Late in the summer of 1834, Toronto was struck by a deadly disease. More than 25 people died every day. They were invaded by cholera, which had come from India, through Russia, through England, Scotland, down the St. Lawrence, and ended up in Toronto. It was a, a really awful time because cholera, it can kill you in 24 hours. Here we have a town of a little more than 5,000 people, and suddenly people are dying right and left. Where would they go? They didn't have a really good hospital, so they erected what were called cholera sheds. One major epidemic was narrowly averted, and the town was saved, but the cost was high. Ireland Park near the Island Airport Ferry is a memorial to those who died when 38,000 Irish immigrants arrived between May and October 1847. With many of them starving and sick with typhus, Dr. George Grasset, medical superintendent of the immigrant hospital, had to take drastic measures to save the town. He issued a letter from the so Board of Health. His ordering, the board has deemed it necessary for reasons which have become but too obvious on the last few days to issue an order forbidding all carters, cabmen, and other persons from removing any immigrants from Reese Wharf after the arrival of steamers at said wharf until the health officer shall have visited and examined such immigrants. Nancy Mallett's great-grandfather came over from Scotland, ending his journey in a lake boat crowded with Irish immigrants. And he writes about it in his diary and how men with long poles were herding them like cattle and they were picking out those that they deemed were sick and sending them to the immigrant hospital. In our records at the cemetery today, they list um, where the people died that are buried up at the cemetery, and there's a couple hundred of them. And so the town was saved, mm -hmm. but Grasset himself died within a couple of weeks because he was tending them. The foundations of the fever sheds and the immigrant hospital would later tell a story. We found evidence of that hospital. We found uh, bottle fragments and uh, plate fragments and other kinds of um, combs and evidence of kind of hospital care. But perhaps one of the most poignant ones uh, findings was a small military cap badge with an Irish harp on it from that period. And almost without a doubt, that would have come from one of those Irish immigrants. The need for qualified doctors was urgent and they sent a petition to England to have a medical school sent up. It was turned down. John Rolfe was a pioneer in medical care and a nonconformist. In defiance of the British government, he set up his own school, and the Church of England and Victoria College quickly followed suit. They're always differing and always sort of rebelling one against the other until eventually the University of Toronto, which of course was the major medical school, got going. Uh, eventually as a combined university in 1905 with medicine in it. The U of T would soon stun the medical world. In the long hot summer of 1921, researchers Fred Banting and Charles Best spent countless hours in their lab before discovering insulin. The university continues its groundbreaking research and has a unique ceremony of recognition at St. James Cemetery. Standing by the monument for the University of Toronto lot in the cemetery, and each year those who have donated their bodies for medical science are interred here. They have a big uh, ceremony where the staff of the University of Toronto and the family members are, are invited, and there's a service in the chapel. Following the service, uh, they come out here and have the final dedication at the site here. For more information, visit our website on topoftheworld.net.